There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. The last video we talked about the activity of metals and how that determines which ions are displaced from solution. In this video we're going to talk about the next stop point, which says account for the changes in the oxidation state of a species in terms of their loss or gain of electrons. So before we start, we definitely need to know what that oxidation state, what that means, because that's a new word. Um, what oxidation state is, is actually the theoretical number of electrons an atom has lost or gained. So we usually, we had zinc and we had copper. So for example, copper to plus means that copper has gained or lost two electrons. And zinc to plus means that zinc has lost two electrons. I'm going to go over that in a lot more detail. But first I want to go over the periodic table and just show you general trends in terms of which atoms like to lose electrons, and which atoms like to gain electrons. So we have these here. These are the metals and the hydrogen as well. And of these metals and hydrogen, these are the ones which usually like to give electrons. So these are the givers. And the, the reason why they're the givers is if you think about it, they want to have eight electrons in their outer shell. All atoms want to have eight electrons in their outer shell. And if, for example, if you have magnesium, which has two electrons in its outer shell, you can either, to get to eight, you can either give away two and drop a shell, or it can take six. It's a lot easier for it to, to give away two and to take six. So magnesium generally gives away electrons and therefore is a giver. And all metals in general will have that kind of habit of wanting to give away electrons. Whereas on the other side of the spectrum, we have your nonmetals, which are these ones. Not included, obviously, there are noble gases because noble gases are generally quite happy. They have like eight electrons. But for example, nitrogen has five electrons in its outer shell. Oxygen has six electrons in its outer shell, and fluorine has seven. All of them only need to take a couple of electrons to get to eight. So these are the ones which are usually the takers. So nonmetals are the ones which take electrons. And we have to talk about not just about the oxidation state, but account. So the, the verb is account. So we have to explain why this happens. And we have to account for the changes in the oxidation state. So I'm going to explain what that means now. Um, right here we have, this is our, the thing that we've covered in the last couple of videos, this reaction, where we have a loss of electrons from the zinc. The zinc goes from zinc to zinc and zinc ion. So it's lost two electrons, which are these two electrons. So we go from, going from the element zinc to zinc ion means it has lost two electrons. Whereas on the other side, we've got a gain of electrons when it comes to copper. Copper has taken those two electrons from zinc and has gained them by becoming copper in its elemental state. So we need to look at um, the oxidation state. And these are the general rules when it comes to oxidation states. These are the rules. These four things here. Um, so we've got elements always have a zero. So the oxidation state at the beginning, so the theoretical number of electrons an atom has gained or lost for elements is always zero, which makes sense because elements are neutral. Um, no matter what the element is, if they, have, if they haven't lost or gained anything, then they should always be zero. So elements are always zero. So for example, in this case, when we go back to our example, we've got zinc, which is in its elemental state, which has the, I'm going to write, not in pink, but maybe in yellow. This is the oxidation state of here of um, zinc and now it's gone from zero to plus two because for simple ions, so again these are the rules, for simple ions its oxidation state, so how many electrons it has lost or gained, is the charge on the ion. So its oxidation state here is two plus because the ion here has that two plus as its charge. Um, whereas on the other side we've got copper so copper 2 plus, again, simple ions is the oxidation state is the charge on the ion. So in this case, it says it's, lo it's lost two electrons. It's 2 plus for copper ion. And then copper, because it's the elemental stage, it has a oxidation state of zero. Now we have to talk about the change in terms of the reactants and the products. So here's zinc is zero. 
and then zinc ion is 2 plus. So that means the oxida oxidation number has increased. It's gone from 0 to 2 plus. And on the other side, we have here we have copper, which was 2 plus, and it's gone from 2 plus to 0. So the oxidation number itself has been reduced because we've gone from plus, 2 plus, to 0. So that's a reduction. So it's been reduced. So that's what we need to talk about. We need to talk about has the number itself increased or decreased. So different word for increased and reduced is actually if we have our, here if we have our um, oxidation number decrease, which we have in the case of copper, going from copper ions to copper element, we call that reduction. Reduction because the oxidation number itself has been reduced. Whereas on the opposite side we have, um, if we've gone from 0 to 2 plus, so our oxidation number has increased, we call that oxidized, so our oxidation number has been oxidized. So you can, you can imagine that oxidized meaning that the oxidation number has been increased. And um, so those, these two scientific words are extremely important, that these terminologies. And a different way you can remember them is also this here, this acronym. So oil rig, oxidation is lost, so that's oil, the acronym for oil is oxidation is lost, and rig, reduction is gain. And that talks about electrons, so this here talks about electrons. So and we can say um, zinc here has gone, has lost two electrons, so it's been oxidized because oxidation is lost, so zinc has been oxidized. And that makes sense both if you look at the oxidation number and just the loss of electrons. They both would give you an oxidized. Whereas reduction is gained. So in this case, copper has gone from 2 plus to 0, and it's gained these two electrons. It has a plus 2 electrons. So it has gained electrons, so reduction is gained. So that's just a different way you can memorize the same concept. But you really need to know those different words, reduction and the oxidation. And that's was for simple ions and elements, the rules for those. But we can still get a question that talks about molecular compounds. So, for example, if we give this kind of um, question and we have to sort of um, identify, identify change in, I'm going to write OS, oxidation state of zinc and of Hg, which is mercury. So we have this equation and we need to figure out, going from the reactants to products, how has the oxidation change uh, state changed? So this we obviously can use, first of all, we can use this rule here, elements always at zero. So in this case, zinc is the element, so it has the oxidation state of zero. And mercury in this here, mercury here, is also by itself, so it's an element, so it's zero. But then if we look at these two, these are compounds, so we can't use that rule for this. We can't use the ion rule either because it's not an ion, it's a compound, a molecular compound. But we can use this rule, which says oxidation state of all compounds must equal to zero. So both of these together must equal zero. And we know that oxygen, again you can memorize this, but oxygen always is minus two. Um, and we know this because oxygen likes to take two electrons because it has six electrons in its R shell. So we can say, okay, um, oxygen is minus two and it has to equal to zero. So obviously then mercury has to be plus two. Minus two plus plus two is zero. So we have that overall oxidation state of zero when it comes to these two being balanced. And on the other side, we've got zinc oxide. Zinc, we know oxygen again has to be minus two because that's always has to be minus two. And then uh, to balance it out, to make sure that the compound is zero, we have zinc being a plus two. And that means overall, again, plus two minus two, that is zero. So then we have fulfilled that rule. So molecular compound for oxidation state of all compounds must be equal to zero. And again, it's good to remember that oxygen is always minus two. So if we know that, we can figure out what the oxidation state is for the other one. 
But now we have to talk about the change of oxidation state. So for zinc, we've gone from 0 to plus 2. So I'm going to show you where that plus 2 is. So we've gone from 0 to plus 2, 0 to plus 2. So the oxidation number has been oxidized. Um, so that is, we have gone, we have been, this is oxidized for the zinc. And if we look at mercury, we've gone from plus 2 here to 0. So plus 2, 0, so plus 2 right here. And 0 for this the elemental state. So if we've gone from plus 2 to 0, that means we have our oxidation number has been reduced. So reduction. Reduction. And, and that's what this dot point is all about. Being able to have these kind of equations and figure out how the oxidation change um, state has changed. So what you need to know is the definition of our oxidation state, which is the theoretical number of electrons an atom has lost or gained. You need to know these rules. Elements always have the oxidation state of zero. Simple ions have whatever it charges. If it's plus two, then its oxidation state is plus two. If it's minus two, then it's minus two. And if it's in a compound, if it's not just an ion, but it's in a compound, we know that overall the charge of the compound is zero, the molecular compound, and we can figure out what the state is, the charge of the individual part is, usually by, by knowing what oxygen is. Oxygen is usually always minus two, and then we can figure out the other one. But yeah, I hope that helped, but you need to be able to work with these kind of equations, and it's always really good to know this acronym, OILRIG, and that oxidation is loss when it comes to electrons, and reduction is gain. So if you've um, gained electrons, you've been reduced. If you've lost electrons, you've been oxidized. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.